There's a new discipline in modern medicine. It is one of discovery and continued refinement. Much of the advancements in the field have been discovered in just the last 50 to 60 years. With new knowledge paired with an increased sophistication of technology, the potential is just astounding. That discipline is neuroscience. Neuroscience is the study of the nervous system, its structure, how it develops, and what it does. Although traditionally recognized as a branch of biology, it is inherently an interdisciplinary science, influencing spheres of psychology, philosophy, medicine, among so many others. There are so many avenues of promise and opportunity to pursue with this great expanse of connectedness. My name is Nya Chow, and I work in neuroscience. Neuroscientists study the brain and its impact on behavioral and cognitive function. Not only is the science concerned with the normal functions of the nervous system, but also what happens in that nervous system when someone has a neurological, psychiatric, or neurodevelopmental disorder. I work in neurology research at Johns Hopkins, studying TDCS, transcranial direct current stimulation, and its potential as a means of symptom therapy for those suffering from Parkinson's disease, or PD. TDCS is a form of brain stimulation that uses a set of surface electrodes affixed to the scalp to deliver a low amplitude direct current to a targeted brain region. This direct current, typically no greater than two milliamps, modulates neuroactivity and functional connectivity within the brain. We hope to use this ability to manipulate that neural connectivity to help manage symptoms of Parkinson's. So let's talk about Parkinson's. It's a neurodegenerative disease. It's characterized by the malfunction and death of neurons that largely function in dopamine production. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It's a chemical that signals and sends messages through very distinct pathways to the parts of the brain that control motor function, movement, and coordination. When these dopamine pathways are disrupted, as with Parkinson's, they present an array of symptoms, most notably motor symptoms, such as tremor in the hands, feet, legs and face, slowness in movement, also known as bradykinesia, loss of coordination and balance, resulting in falling or bumping into things, and rigidity, stiffness in the limbs and the trunk. Additionally, non-motor symptoms, such as depression, memory loss, and dementia, characterize some stages of PD as well. As a chronic and progressive disorder, the connectivity of these dopamine-dependent neural networks continue to slowly degrade, worsening symptoms over time. Presently, there is no cure. Is everyone feeling sad and depressed yet? <laughs> have I brought the mood down to an uncomfortable anxiety? <laughs> if I have, then good. Because this stuff is sad and depressing, and that's exactly why this matters. Because for those suffering from Parkinson's, that's exactly what it is, suffering. Imagine living every day without full control of your own movements, where you can mentally play out these simple movements, like bringing a spoon to your mouth or standing up from a sitting posture. These things used to be easy, second nature to you, but now your body disobeys. Your limbs are stiff to move, and when they do, it feels like slow motion. Your body can't keep up with your mind, and it feels like you're trapped in a vessel that's slowly sinking. I promise you, this talk gets worse before it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> My mom has young onset Parkinson's disease. She first started showing symptoms about 25 years ago, just after I was born. She was in her 20s, right about my age. My childhood was accessorized with MRI and CAT scan images, visits to specialists all over different hospitals, and an intimate observation of the developing severity of her symptoms. Although an unfortunate circumstance, I genuinely view it as a beautiful tragedy. You see, I have developed a passion and an eagerness to better understand the disorder and to be part of that forward movement of progress. I feel connected to the research on a deeper, more personal level. With every patient, I see 
my own mother. I see her tremors. That patient is someone else's mother, someone's grandparent, a mentor, maybe a school teacher, somebody's role model. To have that unique connection with a patient is so special for both parties. There's an extra layer of trust and understanding that often gets lost in the sterility of a hospital. Presently, there is no cure. Uh, Parkinson's is still not fully understood. And patients are treated for their symptoms. Medication has come a long way, but is still unreliable. It's difficult to manage. And patients build a tolerance over time. And this is while their symptoms continue to worsen. Surgery, deep brain stimulation, is an option, but is highly invasive. It's not suited for all patients, and is legitimately terrifying. Additionally, surgery only alleviates a spectrum of symptoms, not all. So here's where things get better. The TDCS device offers hope and potential to relieve symptoms that surgery can, and more effectively, the medication can. By targeting the specific brain regions, we're trying to manipulate those already existing pathways that elicit particular symptoms. For instance, by focusing on the motor cortex, we hypothesize improvements in motor function, such as increased movement speed and faster reaction time. With cerebellar targeting, we anticipate greater control over those involuntary movements. The treatment is painless and non-invasive, and it's tailored for each individual. Methods are dependent upon that patient's particular symptoms and severity. Some positive outcomes observed include improvements in motor function, such as gait coordination and decreased bradykinesia, which we know is slowness in movement. The objective is to provide consistent symptomatic relief, allowing patients to regain some form of control in the of their lives, and quite literally of themselves, dramatically improving quality of life. The ability to stabilize that spoon, to independently feed themselves, or to stand up from that sitting posture, to give a loved one a big hug. It's simple tasks like these that we hope the treatment can help restore. Tasks so human and essential to daily life that we, you and I, likely take that for granted. The real beauty here is in the breadth of potential that lies in TTCS if we can master targeting and effect of manipulating those neural connections in specific brain regions. We haven't mastered it yet, but we are making progress. And in case you're wondering, my mom wants nothing to do with that progress. Don't get me wrong, I know she's proud of me, and I'm convinced she loves me dearly, but she hears a wild excitement in my voice, my passionate conviction for the research, and it scares the bejesus out of her. What she sees is a crazed, mad scientist who wants to put a lightning rod to her head. <laughs> Talks of brain stimulation and direct current are met with, hell no, and you're never taking me alive. <laughs> as soon as she's of age, I'm putting her in her home. <laughs> I'm glad you guys laughed. <laughs> <laughs> I have made many failed attempts to either gently encourage or emphatically convince her to participate. I can't help it. I have great expectations, and I sincerely believe in the research and technology. It's hard for me not to get violently excited. I believe the potential is realistic and attainable. And she's my mother. I love her to pieces, and I just want what's best for her. I've developed a very personal loyalty to the science because of the circumstance I grew up with. That is the beautiful tragedy that is my mom's Parkinson's. It is absolutely heartbreaking to see her at her worst when the disease has the greatest grasp of her. But I feel incredibly fortunate that she has always taught me to harness any feeling of despair and to use that to fuel motivation. We hope to apply the TDCS treatment to a multitude of disorders beyond PD, epilepsy, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, depression, eating disorders, among so many others. So even if you don't personally know someone with Parkinson's, this technology may be more relevant to you than you think.
And it's not easy to find beauty in the misfortunes and frustrations that find you. But when it hits close to home, I hope you make that your hunger. I think that's an idea worth spreading. So thank you.